Out of the box Skyhoy controllers will give you a lot of functionality and when you assign actions to keys on your Skyhoy controller they'll pick up colors and labeling from the devices you connect to and from the conventions that I established like a, a recording button will typically be red and blinking while any other button is typically more agnostic so that it will light up in white and you need to assign the color if you want it differently. Now in this video we'll look at how you can fine tune and add labels, colors and graphics to your controllers to go beyond what comes out of the box, although that is typically meaningful. So first we'll look at how we can paint a Skahoy panel with colors. On this Crosspoint 24 controller we have already connection to an ATEM switcher and the keys are colored slightly differently than they would be out of the box. For instance the keys up here that are generally assigned to macro execution has been colored orange. Normally they would be white and how did we do that? Well on a Skyhawk controller you can configure everything and there are a number of meta elements that you, you see on this one. The one is the controller element here and if you click it you see it is currently blank. In this element I could set the default color for the whole panel but we have mostly used sectionized coloring. So if you click on section number one on the panel you see that amber color has been assigned to this section. So all those keys are currently lighting up in amber and if I change that to let's say dark blue I just make that change, I save it and you'll see immediately this is updating on the panel to dark blue for that section. So when you paint your keys with colors you do it in three levels on the controller level for the whole controller, for the individual sections and finally on the button level. So I could take uh, the first button here which is assigned to panel brightness not macros and assign a um, new action for local color and let me see it is right there. I now select the color, um, what will we choose? I want a cyan color here. I press save and you'll see this button now changes its color to a different one. So there you see individual buttons can have their colors painted like that, the whole sections and the whole controller. So how do I know the whole controller could do that? Well if we go to section one and we uh, remove this action we'll see that it falls back to the default which will be white colors. But then if I go to the controller element here and I add a local color action right there and I paint it pink. Then saving you now get pink color on those buttons and you also see it for LEDs. You don't see it on the others because they also have their local colors but generally pink is now the default color across the whole panel in this way. Okay so that's how coloring can, can work but you can even go beyond that because as you can see um, on these buttons down here where we are selecting um, uh, cameras you can also choose a different color for and if, if you want to see how that's done you go to section 3 you can see that pink is selected as the default color here. I want to change that to uh, ice but I can also choose a different color in case it is highlighted. So I'll choose um, uh, purple for this one okay. So I save and we'll now see that in this case I have ice for the highlighted button color but I have purple for the dimmed button color. Now if you even want to go beyond that and say when when the uh, the button is off it is going to be bright instead of dimmed. I just change it to bright, I save this and you see immediately these buttons become somewhat brighter so they have the, now the same intensity just a different color. So that's what you can do with the local color action. You can do it on individual buttons on section level or for the whole controller. You also find colors like default and if you choose that you're basically going to, to select the default color on the panel uh, by choosing that one. So um, in this way you can paint any LED, any LED bar, any button on your Skahoy panels. Graphics is the next thing we want to look at before we come to labels which is kind of the end of this video. Graphics is, yes, graphics on the displays of your Skahoy controller. These displays are not just text, it is graphical displays. So every single pixel can be addressed by a graphic if you want. Most displays on Skahoy controllers are 64 by 32 pixels. So this is why that's the format that you can, you're invited to use here. So to put a graphic on a Skahoy controller you need to go to the online configuration and you go to that place using the firmware updater with your panel connected press the online configuration button and you are taken to a page like this 
where if you go to advanced configuration as you saw me just do, manage media, on this tab you'll see you have a place here where you can add images. I already put two images on this controller which uh, has been uploaded from my computer. So I could now uh, add a new image but I'll just delete these two and add them once again so you can see how this works. Um, I'm basically removing these now. Yes, so um, adding an image pressing this button you see if you have a PNG file, JPEG file, something you can upload here it is gonna be uploaded. It's converted to black and white and uh, sized to 64 by 32 pixels and now it will be stored in the firmware of the controller next time you update. If you want to uh, look for a number of icons that we have created, you can go to our GitHub repository, our, our public GitHub repository. I have it right here. And there is a folder called 64 by 32 graphics in the support uh, repository from Skahoy. And here you have a long list of icons which can be more or less meaningful to you. But you see you have something like a play button in various shapes and sizes. You also have some fun stuff like Space Invaders and so on. That was the one that we picked just before. You can see um, some tests, how, how fine can you actually put a text on these displays and so forth. So there are a number of icons. These icons, for instance, would be fantastic for having visual representation of preset recall on a PDC camera and so on. So many of these are for your inspiration so you can see what's possible for testing out and so on. But some of them really also um, could be very useful if you uh, want to do stuff. If you go to some of the other folders like, like Zoom here, no I think that's uh, probably not the one you see. They are kind of uh, divided into different sections and here you have one for routing. You can see there's indication that if you press the upper and lower edge it is outputs, inputs, pages to the sides and so on. So we have some kind of navigational elements that you can use out of the box if you want. Uh, you can simply explore what options exist by going through these folders. Now anytime we pick one of these and let's go back to the Space Invader picture right there. Then you just select it, it's uploaded here, you, you save the settings and then you update your firmware of your controller. And when you do that you can um, come back to the configuration interface as we'll do right now and apply that graphic. So on the controller, the Crosspoint 24, I have a number of buttons here where I want to play with that. Let's say macro number two should have the graphic with the Skahoy logo. So what I do is I click this one, you see the action for playing back macro. I now click plus and in my list here I can search for local graphic. That action allows me to pick between the graphics and now you need to remember the number. Number zero is no graphic. Number one is going to be the first one that we had in the original one uh, which was the Space Invaders. So let's try that one and see what happens when I save. You see this graphic is instantly applied to the display and if I change to graphic number two and save you'll see that now it's a Skahoy logo in some kind of um, this proportional form. But it shows the point, the graphics that we uploaded on the website here and originally in the other order will be available by choosing them from that menu. So that's how graphics works with your Skaho controller so you can have individual icons on all you, your amazing OLED enhanced keys. Next up is labels and labels is when you put text on the displays. So you can do that in both the, the way you, we did with graphics. So let's quickly explore that and you see there's on the same page a number of strings you can add. They get integrated into the firmware again. So it's like a repository of labels baked into your controller and you can pick those and apply to your controller. So we'll be doing that but later I will also show how we can pick them from a grid which is dynamic on the Skahoy controller. But we'll be referring back to these quite a lot and uh, you see strings 1 up to 8 here and on the Skahoy controller we'll see that a number of keys in this section has already received these labels for their label. So let's just pick key number 9, 10, 11 and 12. You see here these are playback macro keys. Uh, that's the ATEM action underneath. But we see for each of them they have label number 1, 2, 3 and 4 selected. Okay. So let's just go back and explore what that means. Now label number 1 is found right here. That's string number one and that's what we see on this key. Now in that case 
we see that the the dollar f2 and then space that command indicates that the rest of the string receives a special formatting where the font size is 2, okay? And that's what will let this string be, be printed like you see it right there in uh, basically a two-line configuration. I think you, if you add a vertical pipe like you see right here, then you'll have a second line coming up so you can have two lines in this way using the F2 formatting. On the next display you see F3, that means font size 3. And I'm not sure you can go to 4 and you shouldn't because then the display becomes too small. But font size 3 is really big. You could use it for stuff like cut, auto, fade to black, uh, just a three word letter, uh, a three letter word in this way, okay? If we go to the next one, we see that th this is the general format. The general format is that you have header, then a vertical pipe, then line number one, vertical pipe, line number two. That's the format you can. Um, normally apply to get uh, three lines on the display and there you see the usual formatting from Skyhoy is that we apply a header to the graphic and then we have some content on on the display underneath. It can be up to two lines but in many cases you see it's in one line. So examples of that you see here uh, auxiliary one camera one, auxiliary two, camera two, auxiliary three, camera three. So there you see the convention usually used header to indicate what is the, the destination, the context, and then underneath that the, the name of the source or uh, the output destination and so forth. So uh, that's the general thing you see run through here. If you look at the macro keys, this is also coming out of the ATEM switch. You, you see we're actually using two lines and we're doing that because we want to say to you this is macro number three. It is uh, called SS, uh, comma, PDC, and then the, the mode is run slash stop of this function. So that we use two lines. But you can override all that by adding your own graphics here. So the third string just shows to you what is the general format. The fourth string is the same as the very first one we had here, but then we have a number of strings, five, six, and seven, and eight here, which we can now play a little bit with. So let's go over to the controller and just quickly change these around to five, to six, to seven, and to eight, and save, and let's see what's popping up on these displays. So uh, let's go back and, as a reference, see the website here. You see the first one here, we have macro, and then vertical pipe run, run one, and there you see that macro, and run one is going to substitute the first two lines, the header and the first line that was otherwise outputted by the um, macro action itself from the ATEM switcher. So it was not completely uh, overtaking the tile. It was, uh, tile is another word for the, for the little uh, display. It was not completely overtaking the display. It was actually adding into what existed already. And we'll see this is going to be useful in a moment when we'll talk about memories. But there is, uh, and yeah, let's go back to the next one. The next one is only header, you see? And there you see again, the header is inserted, but we are preserving uh, the last line. Then the next one is only line number one. There you see the header is preserved from the ATEM switch action, and we insert line one, and uh, that's also the case in the last case here. Now, in all of these cases, we are using the action, let's go back here, and the action is called local label with this. It has some modifiers and let's take a look at those. The, one of them is clear display. And guess what that does? If I select that one, it will now not overlay itself onto the existing content. It's gonna wipe it out. So now it's only what I put into that label that gets displayed. And that is in many cases what you would expect to happen, that clear display is actually, um, you know, what, what happens. It, now it's the case for all of them. And you see by selecting clear display, we wipe out any existing content. But the default mode is that we are adding to the existing content. So that's, that's good to keep in mind in just a moment here. So that was labels. The only thing that we need to look at for local labels is really what is, is status. And let's see what that does. So keep an eye on this one and then let's see how that changes. Okay, so the title bar of the label changed to be solid. Now there's a convention on Skyhoy controllers that we are using on all our actions. When we have a line underneath, it's a label. It tells you what the button uh, does when we have a solid bar, like you see right now on this button, 
It usually means that the value you see on the button is the current value. For instance, if you had a camera selector button showing that this is the current value, you should see, um, for instance, camera 2, that should be the currently selected uh, camera. And if the camera changed to camera 3, you should see camera 3 on that button. Th that's also true for inputs and outputs and everything else. So therefore, most often, when you have encoder knobs and displays above them, you'll see solid bars indicating that you're looking at the current value. But most of the time on buttons, you see not the solid bar, but the, the line indicating that this is a label representing the value you get when you press that button. So that's the difference and why it's called is status. The status is the, the current value and otherwise it's called a label. So that's an uh, um, a convention we are generally applying, but you can also overwrite that using the local label action in this way. So I promised we'll be looking at memories and uh, what is memories? Well, it's a way that you can in, um, manipulate internal variables in your Skyhoy controller with a value. We use it for camera selectors, for instance, or selectors for a, an ME row on an ATEM switcher. So um, it's actually a very good example because if we um, go to a button like this one, you'll see that we can select um, program source and then we have ME1, 2, 3 and 4. We have memory A here. And if I s select memory A, then it means that the ME row that I'm going to get depends on uh, a memory register, in this case, memory number A. Okay, so on a button up here, for instance, I could select memory A and um, just doing it right here. So, I could set it to, um, so the, the thing is, if I had a 2ME switcher, it turns out that I need the value zero to represent memory uh, ME row number one, but I need the value one to represent ME row number two. So I'm just copying this over, inserting it here, changing it to a one like that. And if I save this now, you'll see that on the controller, we have memory A uh, zero and one, and down here, uh, let me just select this one. You see ME number one program will select black. ME two program will select black. So this is now essentially my ME selector. I would like this to be labeled differently. So now we'll be playing a little bit with how labeling overlays can help us to uh, achieve that, okay? So in the case of the memory function, we have actually integrated labels directly in the function because we believe it's so often used that you wanna change the header, for instance, with a, a local label. So there's no reason to have two actions. And if we then, again, we are referring to our labels here. Oh, by the way, if you go to the bottom, you can actually select your images. So even labels in this case for memories is more than just 100 labels that you can add in this interface. It is also the first 10 images that has been uploaded to your controller. So let's just check that out real quick. See if we get the space invaders. Yes, we did. So that's great. but it was labels we were looking for. So now I selected label number one. Let's see what happens if I save. Instead of memory A, it's now gonna give us that label overriding completely. Now, we need to go back and look at the formatting we had here. So, what if we choose string number six? That has only the header defined. And my guess is that we'll see, let's just close this one. We'll see header if I select string number six, label number six save and we see that in the display oops over here it now says he header and then underneath it says zero okay so so far so good we could now change this to to be me instead me and then it it would say me zero which is not super meaningful but obviously if i change this one to set m slash e that would be my header for this line so that's great if i select the string number seven let's see what would happen if if i did that so let's just quickly select string number seven. This is gonna be interesting because the header should be the same. Uh, it should go back to memory A really. But then you see, on this, in this case, we are not substituting the entire line. We're actually adding a prefix. Very useful because in the case of memories, you might want to instead use that label to prefix the zero. Um, I could suggest that we then choose a, a header uh, called um, um, a bus and then next to it it said m slash e colon and then the zero would represent either the um, uh, the me1 or the me2 
So it, it is becoming quite obvious now that we want this zero to be a one instead, right? So this is now a function related to the memory function. If I choose display plus one, guess what happens? And I should probably just do it for the second button here so you can see that there's consistency. But now I choose it for both of them. Then notice how those two numbers, this, the one uh, zero and the one now becomes one and two. And that is because it's so often used that we start with the zero internally but it's actually a one and then forth going from there. So <clears throat> using that function is also very, very efficient and smart. So what if we really want the label not being a prefix for the number, but be a true label? Well, the solution of course is in this case where we don't want that mix to simply add the local label action like we have just done before. So let's just quickly go and, and refresh our memories here. We'll pick local label, um, add a local label, and where is it? Where is it? Right there. Label number seven. Oh, am I doing this on the right one? No, I, it was really this one up here. Okay, so label number seven for this one. We will then clear the display. <clears throat> so the solution to this, to wipe out that, would be to create the full label for the button using the local label, clearing the display. And if we do that, we'll get rid of the numbering coming from the memory, as we would expect and as we saw in the section over here. One of the downsides to using labels in this way is that you need to bake them into the firmware, compiling it, uh, setting them on the server. So you see there is some inflexibility here. On the other hand, there is also a very uh, secure approach because the fact that your labels get baked into your firmware means that you can safely clear the presets of your controller and you'll still have your labels available. Of course, you can also do this online. Of, well, it's not online, it's actually offline. So I'm currently working in my local web interface and this is what enables me to just click a save button and then immediately it's, it's pushing th uh, through on the controller here. So there are ways that you can select labels that are dynamically available to the controller. So let's look at that. And therefore, I wanna go down to the section called labels. Now, here I can define a number of rows and columns and uh, I'll just make one row and five columns. So in this case, uh, we often use these labels to dynamically label presets for robotic cameras. That is how it's most often used, but we can refer to them in our labels up here. So let's just look at it for these two uh, cases where I wanted to have this ME label set and um, I had this idea that I wanted something that, um, so I just removed the old one and then I had these two, you see, <clears throat> if I scroll down, I have something called grid 1.1 and I have another one, grid 2.1. So the two would be like a coordinate. Two is column number two, row number one. So I'm now getting a label from the first and the second field if I go down here. So there I now want to type in something. If I type in F2, um, dollar $F2 and then uh, something, I could put in hello and then I'll just copy this over to the next one and save this. So let's see what happens when I'm saving this. I'll get two labels that completely overtake the displays. Now that was just to kind of do what we have already seen over here using the F2 uh, formatting option. But of course I want to do what I was talking about just before. In this case, I want to, to have um, a bus select, that is gonna be my headline, vertical pipe, and then I write ME colon, and I want this label, I can clear out this one, I want this label to be used for my um, s uh, selection over here. And you see it's actually coming through already on the first one, bus select is now my header, ME colon is the prefix for that line. And all I need to do is really just point the second memory selector to the same grid value. So there you can see there are ways, and now you see it's updated here, there are ways you can use dynamic labels in there. And maybe it's a good way to play a little bit around until you copy your labels over into the official media interface here, where you can save them um, inside the firmware. So if you clear the presets of your controller, you still keep them. And uh, the whole thing about clearing presets is, is really useful because it allows you to go in the field, play with your controller configuration and always reset it back to the latest firmware you baked onto it. So it is um, quite often an approach used 
to, uh, to bring in the right balance between experimenting and also having safe configurations you can choose from. Final topic is going to be fonts, and you can set the fonts on any display on a Skyhawk controller. There's even a function to set the background color, but that's only available for the Frameshot controllers or similar that has color displays. But we can uh, play a little bit with this. We can uh, work with the selector for the um, ME rows that we have built up here, and those two allows us to add an action called local display font. Uh, let's just quickly look at local display color because there you see a number of colors we can choose for the text and for the background and that's exactly what you would do on a color fly if you want but local font is available for all of them and here you have text width and height, title width and height, font for title and normal and then title bar padding okay. Let's start from the back. What is title, back, uh, title bar padding? Let's see it. Now we're going to see two things in comparison to each other. So I save this one and notice how this one changes now. It gives a little more vertical space around the title in the image. And um, whether you want that or not, it's just a aesthetic uh, consideration. Title font, let's pick font number two. And you'd see the font changes just a little bit. It actually becomes a more tiny font in this case. I could also select a more bold font. That's font number three. No, that's actually the default font. Sorry about that. But if I change it to font number one, we we'll see a more bold font on the title. There you go. That's the more bold font. Basically, a, yeah, bold font face that you can use on the controllers. Now, so that was the font selection. The same is true for the content selection. So once again here, we could select font number two and you'll see that is used for the lines inside the displays right there, that changed. Now the title, uh, height and width and so on. If I change the title width to, uh, to two and the height to two, you'll see that the title is rendered in, in pretty heavy characters here and everything else is moved down a little bit. So you can see you can play a little bit with your layout if you want using these functions for setting the height and width of the font. And the same is of course true for the um, text where you can also set font size number two for instance. Let's see if everything else is as it used to. So I'm everything being zero means no change, but now I'm setting um, the 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 text width itself to two. Actually, that's not going to change a whole lot because in that case, I'm just selecting the same font face that it currently is. But as I'm saving this right now, you see that ME1 is going to be rendered really big, so big that in fact, there were not pixels enough on this display. But on some of the other displays we have, we have more pixels in the width of the, of the tile. So it really depends on the tile you are applying this to. And anyway, these options are available right here to you as system actions. And as you can see, system actions carry a lot of functionality that uh, affects the system as a whole, like setting the, the font, um, uh, dimensions and the font size um, and, and face as we just saw. We can set the colors of the buttons, we can set labels that override the default labels, we can add graphics and so forth. So that's some of the functions that you find, the formatting functions that you find in the system actions on your Skyhoy controller. Thanks for watching this introduction to how you can use all these formatting options in your Skyhoy controllers. If you want to know more, you can read in our manuals. They are covering this subject extensively. Our hotline support is also available to answer your questions to help you tweak your controllers to perfection.